Hi there, my name is Ann Tilly and I wanna make some new clothes for my dream wardrobe. But how do you even get started with designing and making your own original clothes? You know, in this case, we are the designers. We don't get to just go to a store and choose from options on a rack, even try things on before we make them. No, we are the ones that are figuring out what fabric to choose, what patterns, um, all of those tough decisions, oftentimes before we even get to try anything on. So pretty daunting, right? Today I thought I would show you one way that I seek out inspiration for designing my own original clothing. And I'm gonna take a look at a fashion trend that I'm constantly pinning on my Pinterest board, which is color blocking. So color blocking is when you mix two or more usually solid colored garments or accessories into one look. So this could be monochrome, love it, uh, contrast colors, pale colors. I'm really drawn to the super vibrant like crayon box, wackola more is more style, which um, is funny because when I actually look at what I'm wearing day to day, what's in my closet, I love me some black and some gray. Um, but you know, the whole point of these exercises, the point of like consciously looking at your wardrobe and making your own original garments is to try to take that idea of who you want to be, um, your Pinterest board of your dream style and who you actually are, what you're actually wearing and attempt to unite. We're going to start with taking a look at what I already have in my closet, putting together some outfits, and hopefully that'll help me find some gaps that I can fill in with some new original designs so that I can pull off this color blocking look. Then I'm going to come back into my home studio, pilfer through some fabrics, and do some sketching. Take a look. just about every article of clothing I own is now wadded up on the floor of my bedroom and I have zero desire to hang or fold any of that back. I've decided to retreat to the sanctuary that is my home studio to reflect on the afternoon's activity as well as to look at what existing fabrics I have as inspiration for future color blocking projects. The first thing I remember learning in fashion school is that you can draw any kind of clothing you want on paper, but if you can't find the right fabric to match your drawing, you're going to have a lot of trouble realizing your vision. And the way that I interpret this is starting with a fabric and using the fabric to inform your design can be a much easier way to come up with new garments. And that's what I decided to do today. Some things that I gathered after playing dress up and looking at my closet through the lens of color blocking is all of my best bottom half options to pull off this fashion trend were all skirts. And being a pant person, it would be great to have a pant in one of these bright colors.
green ended up being my most popular color, which I was kind of surprised by. I actually thought it would be blue or purple. And then when I saw how little purple I had, I was disappointed because I love wearing that color. So that immediately says to me that maybe I should consider making something purple. And if I wanted to bring some variety in, I had little to no yellow or orange or pink. So thinking about trying to add one of those colors would be a great option. Although honestly, I don't know if I'm a pink person. I'm starting with a turquoise woven wool blend that screams pant. <laughs> A blue sort of suede sort of velvet upholstery fabric that's actually leftovers from when we reupholstered our couch. And finally, a stretch silk charmeuse, which I have a ton of. And being that it's white means that I could dye it virtually any color I want, which makes it a great option for this project. This fabric has a great heavier bottom weight quality to it, but you wouldn't make a jean out of this fabric. You'd make something more like a dress pant, which is interesting because I have never thought about dress pants or worn dress pants, but now I'm obsessed with the idea of a turquoise dress pant. Dress pants have a different style of construction than the jeans that I'm used to making. So I think it would be smart here for me to start with a store-bought pattern to help me with the step-by-step. -step. I'm thinking that this dyeable silk is my golden opportunity to get a little bit of yellow into my closet. So a simple flowy baloney skirt could be really beautiful but I'm not totally sure what kind of yellow I'm imagining so I pulled out my marker box and just started coloring directly onto a piece of the silk which is not a permanent solution for putting color onto fabric but definitely a quick way for me to visualize what the yellow would look like on the silk and help me pick out a dye for this project. When I think silk skirt, I can't help but think bias cut silk skirt. In that case, I could do something really minimal with just the beauty and flow of cutting something on the bias. So if I do something simple, I might be able to get away with not having to buy a pattern, but I'll need to do some research on how I would adapt a simple pattern to cutting on the bias versus cutting on the straight grain. For the blue coat, I had a magazine clipping and a vintage pattern to use for inspiration. But the limiting thing about looking at static images like these is that we don't get a sense for how the garment will move when worn. For example, the plaid coat doesn't actually have any sort of front closure, which I would want in a coat. And it doesn't have a collar, it just has these high corners, which are interesting looking in the image, but realistically, depending on what kind of fabric you're using, I'm guessing that they could easily flop forward and you would have a look more like a lapel. The more that I'm looking at this vintage pattern, the more I'm really liking just about everything that is going on here. It does have more of an A-line silhouette, whereas the plaid jacket has this really nice square boxy style. So I might bring the boxy style to the pattern that I have already and start with a mock-up of this pattern and use the sample to help me further my design decisions. I can't decide if I like the three-quarter, well, I know that I like the look of the three quarter length sleeves. But practically speaking, do I want a winter coat that doesn't cover my whole arm?
I have been long wanting a more grown up version of a t-shirt in my wardrobe. And here I thought would be a perfect opportunity to do a silk t-shirt, especially because I already have a pattern that I could use to make this garment. I just would need to tweak the sleeves a little bit. And purple seemed like the perfect color choice here. Although I can't say that I love the shiny quality of the silk charmeuse for every garment application. So I'm kind of thinking that once I dye this fabric, I want to take a look at the back side of the fabric and maybe use that matte side as the outside for this garment. Ah, well, that's it for today. I am pleased to say that I am well on my way with four new sewing projects up on my design wall. I already have some fabrics and some patterns, but I still will need to do some research and some shopping for these projects. Now, this video was super motivating for me, like clearly it encouraged me to do something that I wanted to get done. And I really hope that y'all found some inspiration in this too. If so, please hit that like button and share a comment below. I'm very new in my video making adventures and any sort of feedback you give, I would greatly appreciate. So, can you guess what project I'm gonna start with next? You just have to wait and see. Until then, happy sewing.